There is hardly anyone who is unknown of the concept of black holes. They have always been a fascinating topic to wrap our heads around as they are peculiar in nature. To this day, there is no clear idea of the state of quantum information that has entered into a black hole. The quantum information seems to disappear as it crosses the event horizon, the point beyond which even light cannot escape. This historical progression of this phenomenal concept is as interesting as the topic of the black hole itself. Going back to the Newtonian era, there had already been a brief discussion on the concept that gravity could become so strong that it has the capability of trapping light itself. This idea had been discussed under Newtonian gravity. They hadn't coined black holes back then. The popularity of this concept grew among scientists when it had been discovered that black holes are the consequence of Einstein's theory of general relativity. To talk about Einstein's theory of general relativity, we need to have a basic understanding of Einstein's field equations. It gives the set of equations that best describes the curvature of space and time. Black holes remain one of the possible solutions to Einstein's field equations. Einstein, though, fundamentally denied the concept that black holes could form. The idea was first fully realized by Carl Schwarzschild in 1916. This is the reason that black holes are often also called Schwarzschild solution. The primary objective of Schwarzschild was not to dig deeper into the concept of black holes. He was trying to understand the curvature of space and time around a typical spherically symmetric object like the Earth or the Sun. He found the solution to the nature of space and time outside of the distribution of matter, but it begs the question, what happens at the surface of the distribution of matter when we just go on compressing that matter more each time? The mass remains fixed, but the radius goes on decreasing and it turns out that there comes a certain point during the shrinking of the distribution of matter that even light cannot escape from there. The surface was thus called an event horizon and the radius at this point was called the Schwarzschild radius. In the Schwarzschild solution, while doing the computation, there is a quantity that goes to infinity when we approach the event horizon. Scientists at the time thought that the solution doesn't make any sense, but it turns out the equation was physically right. Instead of the perception that an object is infinitely large, when it approaches the horizon, we could simply look at it differently and see that the curvature goes with the inverse square of the mass. Although the solution was proven to be right, there were still no physical implications that black holes could actually exist out there. Schwarzschild's solution was done for a perfectly symmetrical spherical object. Scientists thus believed that the necessary conditions for the formation of black holes would never occur in nature until it was proven by Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose in the 1960s. And it was established that when a star runs out of nuclear fuel and has no means to build pressure, if its mass is large enough, it could indeed collapse into a black hole. So in this way, the concept of a black hole found its footing in general, from the constant denial by the founder of general relativity, from being a mathematically absurd solution to being physically impossible and finally a real entity that occurs in nature. In fact, as it turns out, black holes are hard to avoid if we are to explore this vast universe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you want to watch more such videos on physics, mathematics, philosophy and theology, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon.